Hey, it's Anne Emery, and I'm going to show you how to visualize data on survey respondents. Let's pretend that you went to an art museum and you surveyed the museum's visitors and you asked them things like, is this your first time visiting the museum? Yes or no? The very first thing that you'll do is just list out some of your key facts in bullet points. We know that we've got 50% first time visitors to the museum. 30% are affiliated or connected with the university that's nearby. These people are mostly from Massachusetts plus 18 other states and five other countries, and their ages vary. They're mostly on the younger side. Bullet points are fine for drafts, but not for final products. There is nothing more boring than a list of bullet points. So we're going to bring these bullet points to life with a little bit of color coding and font sizing and some simple visuals. And think about the page layout first. Okay, so there is nothing more boring than just like a list going in order. There's no creative use of space on the slide or the page. So the very first thing I would do is think a little bit more outside the box. Think about your four variables, how you can arrange them. Do you want to have four variables in a list? Do you want to have four different columns? Or in this case, I'm going to experiment with a kind of two by two grid, two columns and two rows. Now let's add one visual per key fact. So for 50% first time visitors, that can be a simple donut chart. Donut charts are fine when they've got just two slices, maybe three, three slices max. It's a simple breakdown, you know, 50% were first time visitors, 50% weren't. Simple question, simple graph. For 30% university affiliates, we can do the same thing. Another very simple donut chart. What about the location data? We know that these people are mostly from Massachusetts plus some other states and other countries. We can certainly make a map of the US. It might get a little small on this slide if we're just trying to provide a quick overview. So I went with a simple icon of Massachusetts in this case. I wanted people to focus on the fact that these people were mostly from Massachusetts. And then for age ranges, we know that these people are mostly on the younger side. That can be a simple histogram or column chart where you're showing which percentage of people were 18 to 29 years old and which percentage were 30 to 39 years old and so on. Okay, so here's kind of the bones of the slide, but let's continue sprucing it up. So let's make some of the font bigger to make the key phrases stand out. And then we'll rewrite the slide title rather than demographic data on survey respondents. That's really just a mouthful of technical jargon. Let's use something more in plain language, like of the 60 visitors we surveyed. I try to avoid saying N equals 60 whenever possible, because for non-data people, N equals doesn't really mean anything. It just sounds a little bit too technical for them. It's not a phrase that they use every day. So we'll just talk about, you know, what the N means in plain everyday language. It's just 60 people. Okay, and then the final thing we'll do is apply color coding. Rather than having a one color slide, we'll use one color per topic so that people can see this quadrant shape a little bit more easily. Let's check out the before version again, a sea of bullet points. Nothing really stands out. It's pretty plain versus after. We've used larger font, a creative use of slide space, the quadrants instead of the list. We've used uh, color coding for each section. And of course, we've added a visual, one visual per bullet point. I hope you enjoyed watching this transformation, and I hope you can apply these techniques to your own projects as well. Thanks.